The film begins with Victor, Renal Mukamatov, the architect, waking up in his coma apartment. On the floor of his chamber is a magnificent city model, but he soon finds that nothing is normal in this place. Fly, his fiance, played by Lubov Oksonova, is dematerializing in a snapshot of him and his girlfriend. Decaying as a result of a decaying mold process? But his residence is as well. And then there's the city. Soon after, he is attacked by oil monsters, and things only get stranger from there. A bunch of individuals come to his aid and inform him that he is in a coma, that they are all in a coma, and that everyone who falls into a coma eventually ends up here in coma land. Sure, I swear, that's the story he's been telling. Did I mention that this film was made by a visual effects artist? But, as far as storylines go, I've heard far worse. So, it appears that these coma patients are all aware that they're laying in bed somewhere. They are aware that they are entrapped. Worse yet, they are well aware that if any of these oil monsters capture them, they will perish in the real world as well. As a result, people try to create or locate a place that is devoid of any memory. This collective world, you see, is a memory-induced thought experiment. The locations are confused because one individual recalls the barge from their youth here, while another recalls it over there. And we get this interlinked, fragmented hellscape of a reality out of this collective mishmash of memories. But here's the catch, the oil tyrants. They can only get to places that are collectively remembered, which acts as a bridge. As a result, the squad is continuously looking for a safe site. Separate, they can blow up land bridges to the site, but they only stay there for a short time. So the coma world is dangerous, but the great part is that they all have their own tiny superhero abilities based on their time in the real world. So, hurrah for superpowers, I suppose? However, the squad is unable to determine Victor's superpower. He is shot with tin cans. Opening parenthesis quest closing parenthesis. They pounced on him using sparring bots. They put him in high stress scenarios to observe how he reacts. But, for the most part, he merely cowers and stresses. And this despite the fact that he thinks Fly is adorable and is intrigued in her. But then, one day, as a squad is out retrieving explosives from a torpedo in a submarine, Reapers arrive, and the architects save them by constructing a ramp that catches and safely transports the bomb down to the group. Ah, he can construct things, that's right. After all, he was an architect in the real world. Brilliant. That's fantastic, I'm glad we figured it out finally. Yan, the leader of this motley crew of coma survivors, played by Konstantin Lavronenko, is adamant that they would establish their promised land if they can only picture it rather than recall it. Bridges are formed as a result of remembering the locations, remember? Did you catch what I did there? Come, on, I consistently provide for you, the reader, and I get so little credit. Man, anyway, but suppose they could build it from the ground up. Is the whole cloth? It'd be the ideal world. Nobody would have to worry about returning to the real world. But as they set off to make this new life for themselves, they are assaulted by reapers, and the architect awakens mid-flight. What's going on? So, finally, we get Victor's backstory, as well as the most engaging script writing in the entire film. So, it appears that Victor, an aspiring and skilled architect, is struggling to make ends meet. Nobody wants his creations. He's having difficulty. It's putting strain on his relationship with his girlfriend, and so on. However, he is approached by the leader of a religious sect and invited to come out and show off his creations. As a result, he and his girlfriend leave. Victor enters the facility, leaving his girlfriend behind. Victor discovers something bizarre while inside. This cult, led by Yan, coincidentally, is a medical innovator, who established the coma communal zone. Yan needed money to fund his studies, so he founded a religion, it was easier than you might think. Then he kidnapped people from society, the sick, the outcasts, the lost souls, and put his beliefs to the test on them, inserting them into coma. But, as it turned out, they preferred life in coma than life outside. They had no recollection of their life outside, or how horrible they were, but gosh, do they have superpowers. Regardless, he offered to take Victor on a tour of coma, but he rejected. Victor and his girlfriend fled, were hit by an approaching lorry, and ended up inside coma, with no memories. Of course, his lover is Fly. And now we know why the film began the way it did. Do you get it? When an architect refuses to work for Psycho, he and his lover are pumped into a coma hellscape. Phew. I'm glad I got that sorted out. Did you get that figured out? Let us hope that we are now all on the same page. But I wouldn't be surprised if we aren't. It's a complete shambles, but dang. Those visuals. Oh Victor is free, he knows what happened in the world, even if we don't. And Yan tells him, look, you've abandoned your sweetheart. You know, the one who's set to abandon you because you can't find work? Her? And she's starting to lose her mind owing to the approaching reapers. So Victor promises to return, ingest a magical elixir that boosts his superpowers in coma, and help Yan build his secret metropolis in the sky. Yan then agrees to let the architect and fly depart. Promise. However, he crosses his fingers behind his back and instructs the medical assistant to turn off their breathing support at a specific time. 
How this moment was cleared though, is a question, 